Hi. I'm Kinlaw. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is a talk that I've facilitated here. Um, first, though, I want to thank Alex Sloan, who's over there in the pink skirt, <laughs> kind of walking back and forth. <laughs> Amelia, Laura Hughes, who was on in installation and design and build, Augie, Jack, and Chris. Chris is in the back, our sound designer and our sound engineer. So I selected some friends and artists who different practices, um, but especially after getting together, I found that we all meet in the middle when it comes to what we're thinking about with listening, how we listen to each other, and our desire for play. So the way we've been rehearsing is just getting together, asking questions, and trying to playfully unlock our answers. And so that's more or less the foundation of what this talk is. So Jazz Lynn is a performance artist and a choreographer, a movement facilitator from Los Angeles. They stage exorcisms and tantrums for choreographies choreographies of the learned body and the shutting down of internal and external worlds. Mia Follick is a friend and a musician, a songwriter, a producer based in Los Angeles. C. Prince, a visual artist, an artist whose work includes direction, creative direction, choreography, and photography. Her work reflects explorations of visual tensions, sensation, power. I'm a really big fan. And then Ricky. Ricky Sele Zoker is a writer and a musician and an artist who's known for textural, electronic sounds, and looped vocals, rooted in improvisation and humor. And I, I, I agree. <laughs> so I guess I'll start this talk with something that we were discussing, Ricky. We were talking about language. And for a little more context, Ricky and I met in a more academic setting. Um, we were talking about how language translates and how in certain settings, more academic, maybe institutional ones, it can be difficult to understand or to ask questions. And we were talking about a piece that your mom was involved with. Um, do you want to? say anything about that? Yeah, um, I guess uh, I think when I'm thinking about um, what I'm making, I'm often thinking about who would understand it and whether yeah. they'd relate to it. Right. Um, and I really like music that's on the radio, but somehow I'm only finally getting to making music that possibly be considered that. And so I had my mom read this academic text and translate it, and um, she was kind of like, it was probably 15 
pages and she was like, this could have been one page. And I was like, yeah, I don't know why we do that. Yeah, you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know why we do that. It's like, just on and on and on and on and on and on. What She was translating it and she was like, so, it was, it was, what she had to say was so much smarter than what the person had to say, but it was basically like, so, people start off straight in their minds. I was like, something like that. But the thing that stood out was the term, the way in which, and so I just, I just stuck to the way in which, the way in which that, the way in which. The way in which, the way in which world, you know what I mean? Right. The way in which, right? So they say the way in which. If you which, think about the way in which. If you think about yeah, the way in way which, which. If you think about the way in 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 which 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 Kin Law, yeah. Question. If you think about the way in which If you think about the way you can way in which What interests you about the medium of an artist talk? I well, I guess what I wanted to do is to try to figure out if there was a way we could ask each other questions and be a little bit more like how we are with it. <laughs> Meaning, I think I was feeling a little nervous anytime I was sitting down to try to explain something or someone might ask me a question about you know, you know, an idea or a work or whatever. And I, I always had a hard time answering them because I, I changed my mind a lot. So I might say a certain answer, and then it kind of is stuck. And and I guess I just wanted a more fluid, kind of fun panel. It felt more like me. It felt more like us. So that was that was more of what I was going for, I think. Plus, I just think everybody's so cool that's on this panel. So I just wanted to give everyone space to be there. Yeah. What does cool mean to you? <laughs> um, I guess maybe just having fun, feeling like I can be in a new place like this and feel comfortable with you. I think that's, that's what's cool about this. Oh, I wasn't nice. sure how it would go. Nice. Um, nice. I, I didn't know nice. how quickly we would be nice. able to create some trust together, nice. but actually, I think, nice. it's, I think it's happening. Nice. <laughs> nice. Mia, I have a question for you. Nice. Tell okay, me nice. about 
Um, nice. You're really inspiring to me because there have been a lot of times where songwriting or, or writing is really hard for me. Um, and I don't like it very much. <laughs> but I notice that you seem to have a lightness when it comes to writing or like faith when it comes to songwriting. And I wonder if there's anything you'd like to say about that. I think that it's... I always like to... I, I always remind myself when people ask me things like this, at first, my first reaction is to be like, no, I get scared all the time and, and kind of apologize for myself. Be like, no, I'm actually not that as comfortable as you think, but I am, I am pretty comfortable with songwriting. And I think it's because I like, I know that inside of me, if I listen to what's inside of me, there's music in there. And I love melody and I hear it in everything and I just want to sing back everything that comes to me. Any word can be a, a song and also, I think I have faith in my ability to keep writing music because I don't think it has to be good. And, and I make a lot of music that's not good and, and I just don't show it to anybody. That's fair. I keep it for myself. Is there a certain, um, like, are there steps to songwriting in good faith? <laughs> do you do it in privacy? Do you do it at home? Do you do it every day? <laughs> I can do it anywhere. <laughs> nice. I like to share it with you. I like to embarrass myself sometimes. It feels good and necessary. What? Yes, please. You can just try to keep pouring it. You can just try to keep pouring it. See, you said something yesterday about, um, what, what was it like being like really ba bad? <laughs> it was something similar to, um, embarrassing yourself, but it's the opposite. It was something that was a lot cooler. I was talking about bad behavior. Bad behavior. Yeah, I was really talking about being your worst. Like how um, sometimes being, being on your worst behavior actually yields sort of like your most truth, I think. Um, sometimes, like, when you're on your worst behavior, you can be really mean. And I think that that's bad most of the time, but sometimes when you're mean, you're just being really honest. And I'm someone who's never really allowed myself to be mean. And I don't really want to but I want to be a more honest version of myself more often. So I'm just thinking a lot about bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the bad behavior of like, I went line dancing the other night and when you're just actually bad, you're just really, really bad at something and how that also yields an incredible truth a vulnerability that you cannot deny. <laughs> did you even give it a, did you give it a try? How did it go? Does anyone here frequent the line dance? Feel so I went 
you remember what song it was? I stepped on probably What song like did you dance to? If 40 any. people's feet. I don't, I, I, I don't know, I don't blame you. So I, I don't know, I don't blame you. Last, last night I don't know, I don't blame you. I stepped on probably I don't know, I don't blame you. I don't know, I don't blame you. I don't know, I don't know that. Feet. So I went line dancing last, last night and um, I stepped on probably like 40 Did you feel like people were fetishizing feet. country? So I went line dancing last, last night and I was wondering, I'm Texan. I stepped on probably I feel like, like something happens in cities where we're trying to fetishize country feet. or the suburbs, I don't know. So I went line dancing right. last night and um, I I don't know if I can totally answer that. <laughs> I well you can't I guess you can't always tell when people are fetishizing what they're fetishizing. Yeah, that's totally true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a there used to be and my signature move was that I would put on lipstick and um, get too close to the mic. So then, at the end of the set, I would have a big ring of lipstick all over the place. And I told myself I wouldn't. I told myself I wouldn't do that anymore. And here I am, just getting too close to the mic again. Um, so you'll have to let me know if I, I end up getting a big ring around my face. <laughs> I was in. Actually, I think playing I in bands in, was one of the actually, best things I was in, that I did. Actually, I, I used was to play in, bass. Actually, I and, was in, uh, even though that's not how you play bass, I know. <laughs> but I used to play bass, believe it or not. And, um, and Was your hair longer? Yes, much longer. It, did it, you look at the audience? Yeah. It, uh, it was much, much longer. It was really thin and I was determined to keep it growing even longer. How long? And uh, how long? Oh, it was, sometimes it was quite long. It was like to hear, some, some of you might know me in my long hair days. I think Renee did. And then sometimes when it got especially long, I would fill it in with more hair. <laughs> so that was so, part of that, yeah. but I think that did 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 did, did you play in mm. anyone playing in bands? You pl certainly I saw played. you play in your band. Wait, that, before I met you. Wait, that, that's <laughs> wait, true actually. I saw wait, I saw that. Soft Spot play at Elvis Guest House. Yep. Soft Spot. I was by myself. Um, I I went alone, <laughs> and I didn't know anybody. I was like completely alone in the city entirely. Yep. And I didn't know you lived I in the saw city. the show and I went and I'd never seen somebody dance the way you did as the lead singer also playing Oopsies. an instrument. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, Sarah famously has no injuries. Oh. Oh, very thank healthy, thank functional oh, body. <laughs> the reason I said that was because I wanted people to uh, not be afraid to touch me. It was because I wanted people to... Was because I wanted people to <laughs> and I didn't I, say that. And instead I said, I have no injuries. And 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 Um, so you weren't, were you ever a theater kid with all the jazz hands that became your angel wings just now? I was a thespian. You were a thespian. What was your favorite role? Role. Has anyone ever heard of the drowsy chaperone? Nope. I was the drowsy chaperone. Ooh. <laughs> Picture it. <laughs> we were talking backstage how we both oh, used to be cheerleaders. Yeah, we did. What was the what was the highest uh, tumbling oh. skill? Um, standing back tack. 
Standing back tuck. Standing back tuck. Damn. I could see you doing a pike. Did you like pikes? I hated pikes. Oh, shit. I hated them. Oh, my God. And but you... I loved a herky. Oh, I love a fucking herky. Would you do a herky? Oh, is that shit. the is that is that with the one foot out? Damn, y'all, we make it all the way to the cabin and we're just throwing it back to the herky. <laughs> I, you don't have to. Uh, should, I get you. I'll do a herky with you. Should we? Okay. Yeah, okay. We're doing. Cheers. We can do an M O C A. <laughs> I don't know any cheers. It wasn't that kind of team. <laughs> You're a songwriter, though. I feel like you could come up with a good cheer. things actually. I'm trying to think of an M-O-C-A cheer, and I can't think of one, which is pretty sad. <laughs> the, the first thing that came to my mind is not appropriate. And it's kind of mean. Maybe you should say it. <laughs> it's, it's not even mean in a good way. It's just M-O-C-A, I don't like you anyway. But, but I don't feel that way about, I don't feel that way about Mocha. 
So it's mean, and it also doesn't make sense, and it's also dishonest. <laughs> so, not a good song. talked a little bit about working at home and you said something about how when you have these moments in private you're kind of trying to come up with ideas um, the time that you spend at home and in private filming on your phone or on your computer or whatever a lot of the time when you're expanding these ideas, you are saying that it can be frustrating or that it can be like a little difficult. Um, so that's also something that sometimes resonates with me. Sometimes the seed idea actually becomes so much better when you expand it and you bring it to others. And sometimes, yeah, it can be, you know what I mean? It's like. So there's something about the purity of having the privacy and, and, and working without everyone's input. And then there's also, when you have people involved, for me, things often like blossom and get better and I get a better understanding. And so I was wondering if you would share a little bit more about your practice and what has been generative for you.
absolutely hate it. And I, and I, the last thing I made. The last thing I made, so I feel like I just I, like have I it absolutely it, hate it. So I haven't. So I now I, I don't even know if I, I like it or if I don't. So the last thing I made. I, I absolutely hate it. You can feel free I, to just. The last thing Maybe I made. We should, I should see your eyes first so I can pass you the I, mic. I absolutely Does anyone have any kind of question for any of us? Maybe I shouldn't sit. I noticed when I sat, I saw fewer of you. Um, yeah, really though. Yeah. What are you going to bring to a potluck? To a potluck? Was that the question? Correct. What do we bring to a potluck? Vibes, honestly, I don't cook so well. <laughs> I usually bring beverages because I'm running late. That's the fastest thing. <laughs> No, I would bring some sort of vegetable dish. A salad, maybe a pasta salad. What do you do to relax? Um, I watched the second episode of the Kardashians yesterday. That was good. Uh, oh, yeah. What was, what was your favorite game to play as a kid?
Any other any other games? We have another question, and it's and the, and the real question is how far does the cable go? Let's see. Can someone give me um, see? Will you give me some slack there? Heck yeah! All right. Now I'm really prepared. Okay. How on? How does one get recognized for art in a place like New York City? All right. Now I'm really prepared. Okay. So the question was, how does someone get recognized for art in New York City? How, one, how does one get recognized for art in a place like okay. New York City? In a place like, okay, yes, right. yes. Um, now I'm really prepared. Gosh, I don't know if I'm... Okay. How All do you... I, oh. Yeah, right I don't there. even know if she was in New York, but all I can think of is rock. Oh, oh Chicago. One, how does one get recognized for art? I was going to say it reminded me of Roxy. Like New York City. Um, all right. I, I played I'm really like two shows a week okay. for two, three years, and then had a big breakdown. Yeah. So. How, one, how does one get recognized for art I think, in a place like New York um, City? Well, I guess it right. really depends on what you mean as recognition. Now I'm really What's cool about today uh, is that people I know recognized that this was happening and they came. So in that way, recognition came to me. And that's, a, that's great because I can look and see some people that I know or that I might know after this. So I guess maybe you just try to do Try to do and try to stay, keep your chin up and, and try to stay, 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 stay comfortable sharing. How did you conceive of this in sound? I think that one might be directed to me. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I love multiples. I, I really like lots and lots of a certain thing. I love that in this case a lot of elements that are usually hidden or, or yeah, t tidied and put away such as cables are totally celebrated. Um, I like trying to make spaces that combine gesture and movement and sound. A good example is, is the desk, where as you move around on it, you know, you kind of become integrated with the score. The, the mics that we're spinning are essentially just like a feedback system that's totally influenced and affected by space and who's standing where and how fast they go, how slow they go. Right now I turn them off. Because um, I, I really wanted it to be a little more peaceful for the questions because I didn't want anyone to feel shy. So I think we have time for one more question. Ooh. Uh, I have a question. I was, um, there is no man in the, like, all the artists are female. And I was wondering, is it like, was it a choice, specific choice or not? Uh, and if it was a specific choice, I like have another, are you afraid of like that it will if it would be man would it, would be like kind of um, bring some sort of sexual polarity into the work? Was work didn't feel like I was on very sexual. Like, did you thought about it to remove sexuality completely, or yeah, or yeah? So you understand some of it, right? Okay, good, great. Um. Polarity into the work was work didn't feel think, like hmm. I was on very sexual like did you Literally. thought about it to remove sexuality so completely? I heavily or... considered who was yeah. gonna be with us. Um, and everyone's basically a boss and and I working with 
professionals, and so I just chose the best of the best that I could think of, and this is who I chose. So there was no casting in terms of uh, a, a, any kind of like gendered casting. <laughs> no casting yeah, right. in terms of... We have one more question. All right, let's go. Uh, uh -huh. a, a, any kind of like gendered casting. <laughs> no casting. Um, what would you say is your useful skill in an apocalyptic situation? <laughs> I don't really have many. I, look, I'm put, putting mics in the air, so don't choose me. I think my one skill is that I could run if we need to like run ahead to see if there's water. I'm your guy. Or if you um, are injured and are not gonna survive, then I'll just go on ahead without you, I guess. <laughs> um, a, 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 a kind of brutal spirit is my skill. <laughs> I feel like I'll speak for everybody on this stage because this is actually a very existential question for me because I'm often like, wow, I have no survival skills and I feel really shitty about it. But then I'm reminded that like bringing the essence of play and pleasure and creativity is an essential skill in the apocalypse that I think we all have here. So. I can, I can whistle pretty well. <laughs> and I think it actually is applicable because if you're really far away and you don't know where your, your friends are, you can whistle and then you're better off to find them. So I think pretty good, yeah? That's true, okay. Yikes. Fuck. <laughs> you think, you think, and I'm gonna bounce back to you, and you're gonna close it out. Uh, well, I like and I honestly, the, the thought was vibes again, which we gotta work on. Um, hmm. I can run. Can't whistle. I I like to sing in a way that makes people want to relax. So maybe that, like. Sedative singing. <laughs> I think I really sold myself short. Early. I'm glad I got the mic again because I can do more than hanging mics. Um, <laughs> I think that I didn't used to be this way, but I think that I now have a good way of trying. Well, some people might disagree, but I do think that I've really worked on an ability to stay calm. And, uh, when things feel super chaotic. And I also think I've learned how to keep bees <laughs> and grow flowers from seeds, which means I could do from other things. <laughs> so this um, concludes our extremely exciting art talk <laughs> talk <laughs> and again thank you to alex and to amelia to laura which laura you should just come up here because laura um is uh, um another installation designer and builder also from new york um so this is Laura. Maybe Laura, before I just close it out, maybe give us your survival skill, because you, because Laura can do so much. Yeah, um, I've thought about this a lot. 
Um, but I did see an episode of Naked and Afraid, and one of the people made shoes for her teammate. He was getting, he was getting a lot of cuts. I feel like I could make some shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely crazy experiment. Uh, do you want to take a, a take an answer at your survival skill, Chris? I'm good with a machete. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thanks.